Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm Larry Wydell, and before we get started, if you want to know exactly how to win again and again, go to wydellonwinning.com forward slash webinar now to watch something I've put together for you. Now let's get going into this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm here talking with Dick Walker from Tampa. Dick has an organization all over the United States. He's been impacting people in uh, all areas of life for uh, a long time. And he's a uh, close personal advisor to uh, senior uh, business leaders all over uh, America. And uh, a lot of people are constantly referring to Dick's impact in their life. I don't know if you know that, Dick, but uh, talk about building teams. And you, the last time that, uh, uh, you know, when we were talking earlier, you brought up the thing of when you went to build your organization, you know, you made your last move to Tampa, finally got positioned and uh, started to build. You focused on building relationships and not partnerships. And you still have those relationships all these years later. And people are flourishing. They're continuing to flourish. You're still in business. You're still motivated. Talk about uh, why that, what that principle meant to you and uh, how it's played out. Well, Larry, um, again, you, your ability to phrase questions is amazing. And I, I, I really appreciate it because you've brought out some things that I haven't thought about for for years and years, uh, but some of this stuff I have put down, uh, I have put down, and I have some notes. So I'm going to go over some things that I've that I've been discussing with some people for a while. Um, you know, people have asked me how how did you do so quickly uh, what you did in Tampa? Well, it wasn't simple to do, uh, but it was easy. To, it was easy to explain. It's not easy to do, but it's easy to explain. Uh, Larry, and I think people have to have some kind of a plan. And I don't know if you remember, Larry, because, uh, you know, we knew each other, you know, um, you know 40 some odd years ago. Um, and and we, we, had, we had an opportunity to learn, learn a business. Uh, but a lot of us didn't have copious amounts of background or, or, or benefits uh, to, to dream, you know, to uh, fall back on. So it, what happened in my case was I learned how to do it and I, I did it pretty well. Uh, and, and I did it on my own. And I did it, I did it as a, a full-time person. I wasn't doing it while well, I'm trying to do three or four other things. Uh, and these are the order of importance that I jotted these down. Um, people are what makes the difference. Um, you have to have a purpose, you have to have a plan, you have to have a passion, uh, and even the Declaration of Independence, it says uh, you are endowed with certain inalienable rights. Among these are, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It doesn't say the guarantee of happiness. It says you can pursue it. So what happened, Larry, when I started my business, um, I didn't know how to, to go out and ask people to join me to go do something. I was good at doing a number of things uh, myself, and in particular in the business that I was in, uh, I knew how to do it. I was pretty good at it, and I was making pretty good money. Uh, I was making seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars a month in nineteen seventy-eight. That was that was a lot of money in nineteen seventy-eight. Uh, so when I started doing that in Tampa, uh, I had an attitude about things, and my attitude was uh, one of Excitement. I was an excited guy. I was excited about what I was doing and what I what I was doing mattered to people. Uh, 
and I was excited. So when I started realizing, instead of me doing this and being a salesperson for the next 30 or 40 years, which was not exciting, I had an opportunity to attract other people. And I started doing the best I could to transfer that excitement. And, and what happened, Larry, they weren't buying a company or somebody that had given them a speech. They were buying me because I had a vision and I was excited and I had a very, very positive attitude. And Larry, you and I both know, attitudes are very contagious. Uh, right. you, can, you can have an okay one. Uh, you can have a one that stinks a little bit, you know, and it repels people. Or you can have a positive, get after it, you know, attitude. And that's the way I, I wasn't, I wasn't, off the wall crazy about it but i i was excited i was motivated i knew what to do i knew how to do it i knew how to teach people uh to do something different than what they had been doing uh and so i attracted people and why did they follow me because i had a vision but it wasn't an abstract vision it was a real vision and i spelled it out and i even created something very years ago, it doesn't matter the business, but you know what I'm talking about. I created something with a couple of people helping me, but it was my idea. They just kind of helped put it together. Something called a success cycle. And it was a it was a path to run on. Uh, yeah. So we, we had a purpose. We had a plan. Uh, they had an excited leader. Uh, and why did they follow me? Because we had a vision. They figured out that I knew where I was going. Sometimes I wasn't 100% sure, but I, I had conviction about what I was doing. And, and I sold the dream and nobody, nobody, you knew me way back then, nobody could convince me that what we were doing wasn't the right thing because we had an enemy and you know who I'm talking about. Uh, and, uh, and as you well know, they were the guys that are, they were guys on the wrong side of the, wrong side of the fence. Uh, and I had zero doubt and the principals uh, and the guys, and, and there weren't very many women back, back then in the business, uh, but uh, the people that joined the team, not all of them, but a whole bunch of them, Larry, bought the dream and they didn't buy it on a part-time basis. They bought it on a full-time basis because they knew that I was there and gonna be there for them come hell or high water, no matter what happened. Uh, without cell phones or anything else. So well, I don't know if you know this, uh, have thought about this about yourself, but you're a very relentless guy. And I guess it's because, uh, you know, like me, it took so took you so long to build up momentum. The last thing you were going to do was let it fall apart and have to build it all over again. You know, it's hard enough to get it going the first time. And uh, rather than being stupid and letting yourself get sidetracked, and uh, then now you have to go and do it all over again. And this time, except the second time, you know how how much work it's going to be. You know, if you you put yourself through it the first time, you got all these questions. But if you stay on the attack, go with what you know, and you'll you'll get better, and you'll get better answers, and it will fall into a pattern if you're paying attention and you can make it a success, uh, cycle. And if you're in business, folks, you got to have a cycle. You got to know what you're going to do on a day, daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis. You've got to know what, where you're supposed to be first week of December of every year, uh, how you want to close out, you know, when you're, you know, the end of, to me, the end of October, 1st of November was when I was evaluating the year and getting ready for the next year, Dick. You know, I just had my, you know, I internalized a lot of these cycles, but you know, you've got to have that for yourself if you're gonna run things, turn it into a cycle. But you, uh, I don't know if you know this about yourself, but you're like amazingly relentless guy. You like never stop. And, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're always asking questions. You're always trying to figure out what the next uh, answer is 
uh, that will allow you to move up a notch because it's fun to move up. You know, people say, why do you guys stay on the attraction? Maybe you can answer this for, them. you know, I was like you in high school, pretty good athlete in some sports, not, not, uh, 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 elite, but I, I was, uh, like the guys who went on to become pros, I did learn one thing, Dick, and that was winning was better than losing. <laughs> and you, never, you never got tired of it. You know, I did enough sports. I was in athletics enough to get that firmly in my mind. Winning was better than losing. And uh, uh, there was never a time where after so many wins, it was all right to get your brains beat. You know, uh, it, and it was like, the quicker you can move yourself into a situation where winning is an all the time thing, uh, the quicker, the better. And that's one of the reasons of going into business for yourself. And uh, have you ever, have you ever uh, considered yourself? Are you aware how relentless you are? Hey, listen, there's a lot of information online, but there aren't a lot of people who have actually done something. In my case, I've actually built a successful business that's accrued over $5 billion in assets under management and has done well even during trying times. Now, if you want to know exactly how I've done this, go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now. I've compressed a decade of learning into five short weeks just for those of you who want to give yourself an incredible advantage and are tired of waiting and watching others move up. Well, I've been told that over and over. I never thought about it quite like that, but I, I, I guess uh, the way you're defining it, that's, uh, that's 100% accurate. I just, Larry, um, it was never okay for me to even when I was a kid playing ball before they even started Little League in our little town. Um, if we went to the ball field and, and we played um, and, and I, I was pretty good at it and I wasn't a bad loser, but if I lost, I wasn't happy. Uh, it, it was, I can't explain it. I think it came from my grandmother. I think I said that earlier. Um, I felt if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and try to win. Uh, winning is better than not winning and it was something that I got good at and I could control it quite a bit. And uh, like you said, Larry, winning is winning is better than not winning. It doesn't matter the game you're playing, uh, but you know, life is, life is not a game. Uh, but if, if we treat it like a competition, uh, I think we'll be disappointed a lot. But if we treat it uh, as a great adventure and realize there are so many doors that we never open because we're worried. Larry, most people are worried about rejection. Doesn't matter the business they're in. It doesn't make any difference at all. Uh, they don't talk to, they don't talk. If it's a guy, they don't talk to a girl because, well, she probably has a boyfriend. She won't like this. She won't like that. And they never ask the question, Larry, I'm telling you, I never suffered from, from that, that plague. I didn't, uh, I really, my mother explained it very well. Uh, she says, well, when I, when I asked her, I, I said, mom, if I don't ask the question, how am I gonna know the answer? So I changed it a little bit in business. And, and I've been saying this and when I'm talking to groups for, for many, 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 many years. The answer to every question is no, until you ask the question. It don't matter what the question is, Larry. The answer to every question that Larry Wydell has never asked is an automatic no, because you never asked. Absolutely. Well, great, great uh, having a chance to talk, Dick. Is there something, as we wrap this thing up, uh, something as a parting final word that you'd like to leave with the uh, listeners? Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, I, uh, I jotted a couple things down about 10 or 15 minutes before we... Uh, before we got together. I didn't realize at first it was just gonna be you and I, which I love the opportunity. And I've, you and I have been, <laughs> we've been business partners uh, kind of like separated at birth. Birth was the beginning of, you know, pretty much the beginning of our company. Yeah. When, you, when you and I were both, you were going one direction right. to Carolina and I was, I was already located in Tampa. And, uh, and 
part of the rest of that is history. Um, but you know, Larry, what I, what I have what I have found is this, and I I think this could be a parting shot. Um, people don't follow bosses; they follow leaders. And you and I had a great leader to follow, not a good one, a great one. And bosses or people that direct people how to do something, leaders teach people how to do something. And there's a lot of leaders in life, Larry, that their whole goal in life is to create followers, people that adore them and people look up to them and so forth. True leaders don't operate that way. True leaders understand there is no success of any kind without a successor. So their goal, true leaders create leaders. And Larry, in our business, as you well know, the only way you win in our business is to create leadership. It's not about what happens on a monthly basis. It's about leadership. People doing things that can be repeated over and over and over again, because that's all that's going to survive. Larry, one of these days, you and I are going to be gone. And our businesses will function entirely based upon the kind of job we have done of creating real, honest to God leaders. In, in my case, I did it with a culture. Uh, I knew and realized what I had to create was some guys like Dick Walker. Maybe not, maybe they didn't do the same amount of premium or, 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 or the same amount of business, uh, but, but they had a dream and they wanted to do something big. They wanted to do something special. And you're right, just like you do, Larry. Uh, I still have relationships. Some of those people have sold their businesses and uh, they've earned millions and millions and then millions of dollars by selling them. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy about that because we developed a culture and it starts with the people. And it's about building real, true leaders so we can go out and create a lot of people that make a lot of difference, Larry. And the last thing that I, that I, I want to say, if I can, if I can find my, uh, my, little, my little note here, you know, there are, there are different ways that we can win at life, Larry. Uh, but I think building relationships is one of them. Uh, we can do it financially, although that is not necessarily, it should not be the number one answer. Uh, or we can do it as parents. We can do it uh, in different ways. We can do it by expanding our scope uh, spiritually. There's a lot of different ways to win, Larry. And success is defined by the personal definition that that we apply to it. But uh, if, if we don't do it, Larry, and if we don't go build and win at whatever we're doing, we are not going to be able to teach other people how to do it. Larry, if you didn't win the way you did, there's a lot of people that would have suffered. And I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah. And I'd like to think, I'd like to think in my case, it's the same thing. We often, we lack urgency, Larry. Uh, we can say no now to something, but not forever. It doesn't matter what the competition is or what race we're running. There's a price to pay, Larry, for everything. And uh, it might be training, it may be time, it may be, you know, sacrifices. Uh, but nobody has ever won a prize worth winning without competing and sacrificing. We just have to decide, uh, are we willing to pay that price? And you don't have to do it for... 30 years, you can do it for 10 years and create something that will be meaningful and your life will be a success because you've made a difference in other people's lives. Yeah. And the thing, Dick, uh, I hope people are hearing from this is what you build will be an extension of yourself. And you don't have to measure yourself by comparing how other people have done it and other people's skill sets and uh, track record and this, that, and the other. You've just got to go with what you know and let nature play out. And you probably will be very uh, happy with what you build because it will be yours. It'll be an extension of you 
and it'll have, you know, you do it the right way. It's going to have a solid foundation and last a long, long time. And the, the, the satisfaction and the joy from that, uh, you know, the payoff is beyond just the today's income, today's success, breakthroughs and excitements. It's uh, the legacy that you build and allowing opening the door, like Dick said, because you fought your way through it, you're opening the door for other people to come behind you and do even bigger and better things. And it's really fun to be able to, you're not responsible for their success, but you, uh, you have, you're related to it, let's say it that way. And you, you can have a, uh, uh, a lot of enjoyment in seeing that success continue. And, uh, uh, because, and you know, it's worth it because how much, you know, how much you enjoy winning. So thanks so much, Dick. We've, we've had a, a great afternoon and thanks for your time and those final words. Well, I appreciate you, Larry. And thank you very much for the opportunity to do so. And I consider it a blessing for us to have been in business together for such a long time, even though we haven't spent a lot of time together recently. Uh, I would like at some point in time to change that perhaps, but because we're not that far apart now. We're only three or four hours apart. That's right. <laughs> Thank I, you, Dick. Uh, if you enjoyed what you've heard and are dead serious about finding out for yourself exactly how this works in the real world, I've taken the most valuable business lessons I've learned over 40 years and put them into something for you to watch. Go to whiteellowinnie.com forward slash webinar now in order to move up as fast as possible. I'm Larry Wydell, and I run the Million Dollar Mastermind. Go, go, go.